Hi, you guys. Thank you for coming. Um, you know, I'm going to, um, it might be heavy on the poetry, so I, for those of you who don't love poetry, this is going to change your minds. <laughs> you. I think so. I had a whole month of being madly in love. I mean, you know, you don't stop it. This is just, you don't stop it, but it's like a month where you can't believe this drug. This is the greatest. <laughs> you. I'm bravely eating my croissant at everyone. I'm living on my wet board. I'm living on my money. Limits set and the lights lower. I worship the blue marks on the hydrant. How like the name of a flower. <laughs> Television. I guess I'm very attached to the small boats moving across the deep blue sea in a world much older than ours, but maybe the same, it speaks to me. The smallness of the boat, the bigness of the night. The shot is wide and I somehow feel close. I want to speak this enormity to you. I feel like that, or I sing like that. That not, or I sing like that. Not modern, or it's like weird when you can't read your own. It's like, what does she mean? I feel like, I feel like that, or I sing like that, not modern or loose at all. I'm loose like a tiny boat in a wide cove, opening out into a bigger water, a, wa a bigger body of water. I relish the small ripples like lines that hold my boat. It's so quiet in the morning. I imagine myself seen, and what's seeing me is a forlorn love. Can you understand this at all? It's kind of lost in a color or a tone, something really old and bound up with everything in the moving picture, and then I am gone. It changes into day or a cartoon, but for the stretch of that voyage, I am known. So that was kind of a combination of watching the Emmys and then Game, Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> you know you get a new computer and you're enraged that you have to teach it all the same <laughs> you were like, come on. So this is you. After all these years, you should know my font. You should know the numbers going in the middle. What I say, there's so many of you. Why don't you talk each time I have to click and press? What's the use of being famous? <laughs> this one's called Kitchen Holidays. The kettle whistling, and I'm peeling an orange. I'm going to finish in the air of this wild horn. And I splash the boiling water into the French press, splattering water, splashing grains. I'm such an oaf. I wanted to be here with you. It's weird when you're moved by your own work. <laughs> Sometimes I cry. It's incredible. So I'm, I'm a New Yorker, and I've started, I bought a house in Marfa, Texas, which is, I mean, I'm in love with the West. Like years ago, I, I taught in Missoula, Montana, and I was like, the West. It's like not L.A. West, like the West, you know? So this is a poem, it's called Western Poem. Purple clouds, my doubts. Iridescent cream, my loss. Purple mountains, my friends. Buzzards circling overhead, my hopes. Birds singing, jagged singing, my indecision. Wrecked skinny tree, my past. Photographs I sent home, my indiscretion. I love you. That's good. <laughs> Amber street light, my reading. My appetite, my appetite. Red striped sky, my confusion. Bright yellow gray sky, my ardor. Car lights, my commotion. Telephone pole, my wishes. Stop sign, my fear. Family dollar, family dollar. <laughs> Courthouse, my opinion. Black cloud, white sky, hesitation. Black cloud, white sky, bliss. Blinking signals, my intentions. Black mountains, too many suggestions. Skipping white lines, my attention. A young cowboy first saw the lights. A young cowboy first saw the lights. The horns on your van, my defensiveness. That old train, my dreams. That old train. Um, so this, I'm going to read a little teeny piece of the Shannon... What did you say? Tell me. I think we'll ever go to Marfa. We've talked about it. Oh, you've got to go to Marfa. The, well, the thing is, you either get the private jet, which I've never done, or, um, or you, drive, you fly to El Paso, and then you drive for two and a half hours through the high desert, but it is so beautiful. Like, you get to Van Horn, and you're like, oh, my God. It's just like, like that. And then there's great burritos right there in Van Horn. So. <laughs> so the essay, the Shannon essay is called Passing A, and I'm just jumping right in. So... You just look at the show, whatever. 
And Shannon's like, she's an old pal. I love Shannon. I accuse Shannon Evner, uh, Evner of needing to write a big poem on the city. Her laureate composed a moment, and that's that. And again, here's how the end played. She pasted the A's all over the place for a year, tore them down, but her, her photographer made a record. And then on June 4th, 2015, that flip book of them filled the underpass. Her vaudevillian linguistic Jew project ended right there on the high line. I take, I'm not Jewish, but I take it as an honorary Jewish thing, so I hope that's cool if you're Jewish. You're like, what is she saying? I'm a Jew. I'm just like. <laughs> Right there on the High Line, it's wonderful to remember how it once was an old industrial railroad within the city, a crusty old thing that haunted everyone for years. Everybody pointed at it at least once. Who will get this thing? And what will they do with it? <laughs> what is your editing process like? Are you constantly editing things even after they've been published and sort of like putting old things with new things, or no? Is it like, it's a done deal after it's Yeah, no, once published. it's published, because I feel like you just have to move on on yeah. some level, and I feel like in order to write new things, I have to regard those as sort of dead in the water in a way, you know? Um, but sometimes I've written something where it, it, it crops up in several places, like the, 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 the context can shift, so I can use the same piece of writing and several books and stuff like that. But mostly I feel like editing, sometimes it's, um, sometimes it's waiting a lot. You know, it's sort of like, because the thing is, is like really alive at a certain point, and then you just sort of need to have, like, I think of it in terms of temperatures, like you need to let it cool down so you can move the pieces a bit, you know. But I mean, I, I once in a while I'm really lucky too, and something just comes out. You were like, holy shit, you know, it's just like, it is there, you know, and that's just like grace, you know. But usually it's patches of that. Like I think you you start a novel, you write like ten pages, and you're like, oh my god, this is gonna be so easy, you know? <laughs> and then you write piles of garbage for a year and a half, and you're like, and then and then you get the next thing, you know, almost because you went someplace else and something else happened, you know. So I think with with large longer works, the the nature of the waiting is different, you know. Like you have to write a lot of words to get to the place where you write the thing. So yeah, thank you. <laughs>